All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, so a couple people in the back. There's still one, two, three, four seats up front if you want to uh, have a seated experience. I see one over there as well. The other thing that I want to do, really important before we start, the cam guys and the generative guys are in the other room. And we have about standing room only. But more importantly, I want to prove to them that I have a more passionate audience than them. So ready? We're going to do one of these. On three. One, two, three. Yeah, all right, good. Take that, Cam team. So, good afternoon. I uh, hope everyone's having a great time here at our first ever Fusion Academy in the States. Um, my name is Jamie Scherer. Uh, I lead the Fusion 360 customer success team. Here's a little thing about me, I guess. I'll give you a, a brief intro uh, of me and my background. I've been with Autodesk uh, coming up on nine years. Um, prior to that, I worked in industry for a yacht manufacturer. So as a uh, designer and CAD manager, you know, use tools like Inventor and Alias and brought in Vault and all of the other Autodesk solutions uh, once upon a time. Been with the Fusion team, um, I can't remember if it's four or five years, it's something like that. Prior to that, worked with uh, the rest of our manufacturing solutions. So Inventor, Vault, uh, always working with customers all along, which is what I'm most passionate about. Um, you might remember me from Adam's presentation this morning. He kept referencing me and Jamie, me and Jamie. That's me he was talking about. Um, <laughs> but uh, what I'm really looking forward to talking to you about today is T-Splines 101. So raise your hand if you have absolutely no idea what the heck is going on with a T-Spline. All right, good. So there's a couple people here. Hopefully you'll, you'll learn something. And if you're an old grizzled uh, expert, I hope there's something for you as well. But I broke out this old textbook from the 1800s that I created uh, called the anatomy of a T-spline. And as an industrial designer who never took an anatomy class, I feel totally like I'm the right person to teach an anatomy class. Um, so let's jump in. What I want to do is really dig into how a T-spline works, what's going on. Uh, we'll kind of jump through a bunch of functionality. I'll maybe give you some tips and tricks uh, to take home along the way. But most importantly, let's start off by what is a T-spline? Um, so here's my Wikipedia uh, best definition up there. But a T-spline is a NURB surface that has the ability to um, where the U and V can stop in a T intersection. Or um, it also is not constrained by only having four-sided patches. It can have N-sided, meaning five or three or six-sided uh, intersections. Right. So not all intersections need to cross. We can have a star point um, or a different connection. A NURB, a NURB surface, great, great question. I knew someone was going to quiz me on that. A NURB is a non-uniform rational B-spline. Um, it's a surface. So if you've used the surface environment, if you use the surface environment really anywhere in the industry, that's what a, a surface is. It's what it's the mathematics that defines uh, a surface. Uh, if you were here earlier uh, in Jake's class and tomorrow, I encourage you to go to UG's class, all the kind of tips and techniques are right in line with each other. What Jake was teaching you earlier about um, how to create great curves, 100% applies to everything that we're going to do today, right? And I will skip over some of the stuff, maybe um, you know, point out some things that Jake mentioned. But again, think about curve creation, think about surface creation, and I'll uh, specifically dig into T-spline creation and how they all come together. You'll probably hear me call it a T-spline. You'll hear me call it a sculpted object. I might call it a, uh, you know, a sculpted body, uh, a form. So in the UI today, it's called create form. It was once called sculpt environment, synonymous with one another, right? But we're talking about the same thing. Um, it's a T-spline. All right. So you asked the question, jumped one ahead of me. So maybe uh, visually to talk about what it is. So on your left, you'll see a NURB surface, right? All T-splines, everything you create in the sculpt or the form environment is a NURB surface. But specifically, if you take a look at that surface, you'll notice that all of the U and V, which are the lines that represent the mathematics of a surface, continue across the entire surface, right? Uh, in the example uh, on your right, you'll see a couple, um, you'll see a couple interesting intersections, right? For one, at the base of you know, kind of that form, I have a T intersection, right? Which is something that in a NURB surface you can't represent without continuing 
that line across the entire surface. Now, so what? What's the big deal? The interesting part is as you get more and more complex, as you're defining more and more complex geometry, um, NURB surfaces can get heavy and heavier and heavier, right? And what a T-spline allows you to do is kind of reduce the amount of U and V or math that you need to define um, that intersection. In another example, you'll see in the T-spline on the right, uh, at the base of kind of that nub that I pulled out, um, is a star point. Right? Again, something that's not possible in a NURB surface, we can represent a five-sided um, intersection, which you'll see right there at the end of my cursor. Right? So brief, um, quick in explanation into what that is. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was um, the basics of T-spline geometry. Right? Specifically, um, what are the, uh, the types of geometry that make up a, uh, a T-spline at its fundamental, um, you know, at its core, and the easiest, most simple ways that you edit or define, um, or sorry, manipulate uh, a T-spline. So at the top, you'll see all T-splines, all surfaces are made up of a couple things. Faces, edges, and vertex, right, or a vertice. Um, faces are obviously, as they describe, it's that big patch. Edges are the edges of a face. Vertexes are the points where they intersect, vertices. Um, now, with that three kind of fundamental ways or pieces of a T-spline, there's three fundamental ways that you can edit them. And it's very simple. It's move, translate, and scale. And I'm going to jump over uh, into product, and we'll just kind of play around, and, and we'll talk through that a little bit further. But at its core, face edge, vertex, move, scale, rotate. Now, in uh, in my preparation for the class, I was trying to think of like, what's a cool, like, interesting new product or something that we can at least start to work on uh, in the 60 minutes that we have together. And I was thinking through uh, all of kind of the newest consumer products, and none of them give me like any leverage, anything to do. I mean, I could use a primitive and do that box for the uh, Alexa, but you know, then we'd be eating donuts a lot quicker than we're supposed to. So what I decided to do was jump back you know, probably 20 years, and we'll use the nunchuck from the Wii controller. I heard a yeah. Thank you. I'm glad someone was happy. Um, gives us a little more leverage, right? A little bit more uh, breathing room to, uh, to play around. So let's jump over into Fusion. Um, and I want to start off by just talking about the kind of simple um, types of geometry that I mentioned before. So I'm going to turn those off, and we're just going to start off with a couple canvases uh, that were inserted into Fusion. Uh, if you're not familiar, you'll find them under Insert can Canvas. So I drop them in, I scale them to you know, an appropriate size. Uh, and what I'm going to start to do is create a T-spline. So as I mentioned before, the form environment, formerly the sculpt environment, is really just a subset of the solid environment. So you'll notice in the tab UI across the top, there's not a form, right? There's not a sculpt. What you're looking for is create form, which you'll also find uh, down inside of the create pulldown. Uh, and once you do that, the UI changes. Now you're in the T-spline environment, right? You're in the form environment. When you return out of here, it goes away. You go back to solid, right? So if you're ever looking for it, I work with customers from time to time. They, it's not there. I can't find it. That's why. All right. So as I mentioned, um, there's there's fundamental ways that you can you know, basically create types of geometry. So I'm going to start off by just creating a simple face. Right? We're going to describe, um, oops, let me do that again. We're going to describe a surface to start the top of the nunchuck. And I'm going to do so just by describing out a four-sided patch. Okay? Now, I mentioned before there's um, uh, there's fundamental types of a T-spline. So uh, let's turn off my side view here, so hopefully you can see it a little better. So there's faces, right? So in this case, I have a you know, four-sided patch, right? I have a four-sided T-spline. Face, edge, and vertex. And just like I mentioned before, if you right-click and use Edit Form, again, this will be, this will be the tool you use in the sculpt environment 90% of the time, right? This is how we manipulate um, T-spline geometry. But when I use edit form, I can 
grab on an edge, and I can do um, three simple things with it, right? If I were to move it, well, that will translate the T-spline along an axis, right? So simply grabbing on the arrow will move it in X, Y, or Z. Uh, I can scale it, so if I grab on the point at the center of that triad, it will scale that edge larger or smaller. Um, and I can rotate, so if I grab on one of these um, little slider handles, I always call them like the electrons or the satellites, right? They're floating around. That will rotate that edge along the axis, which in this case will twist the surface um, in either direction. Right? Simple enough. Three types of geometry, three ways to move it. But with a with this simple kind of four-sided patch, I'm not going to be able to describe um, this entire surface, right? If you were looking at that nunchuck, you're familiar with it because you've held it. It has complex curvature in multiple directions, right? And the edge also is not, you know, not flat, right? So not an easy shape to describe, but the beauty of T-splines is it allows you to capture that really quickly and do it with a bunch of different techniques we'll talk about, including um, using sketch geometry, if that's uh, what you prefer. So let's go back. We're going to go to this front view, and I'm going to start by, uh, in the right-click menu, I'm going to insert an edge. And what insert edge allows you to do in the T-spline environment is subdivide or split those faces, right? So as I mentioned before, I have, in this case, you know, now I have um, four faces, right? One, two, three, four, which is still probably not enough to describe all of that curvature. So I'll continue to... Um, you know, maybe use the insert edge tool. I'm going to split this up uh, a number of times. Or there's another tool, um, spoiler alert to probably something I'll show later, called subdivide, which will allow you to describe how many faces, right? If you wanted two by five, you can do that pretty easily um, that way as well. I'll just split this one last time, and then we'll, we'll start to make some edits here. So now with my... Um, my new T-spline that I've been working on. I'm going to use Edit Form, same tool that we talked about before, um, and I'm going to start to make some manipulations. Right. So the first thing that you'll see here is, you know, I can move these um, these vert vertices uh, around in X, Y, and Z. And the first thing you're noticing is I'm obviously doing something that's asymmetrical, right? Which is not ideal in you know, probably most product designs, but in this case um, especially. So. One thing that you can also take advantage of in this workspace is using symmetry. So symmetry, just like it sounds, allows you to kind of impose that a product, um, or sorry, a body, or maybe multiple bodies are symmetrical to one another. So what I'll do is say that this product should have um, mirrored symmetry. And I'll say that this face is symmetrical with that face, and then Fusion will go ahead and, oops, let me undo that real quickly. There we go, let's try that again. Um, there we go. Behaving. Not as expected. Let's just do it this way. Um, internal symmetry, I'm going to say that they're symmetrical to each other, which will add a green line of symmetry. So now, whenever I make a change to one side of um, my T-spline body, the other side will kind of react appropriately. Right, so as I grab kind of the different faces, edges, and vertices. And maybe I'll start by grabbing the scale manipulator, which is probably a little hard for you to see. Um, one thing that's really helpful in the edit form dialog box, you can filter down your selections, and you can filter down um, the transformation mode. So right now, with that slider, I can move copy, I'm sorry, move scale, rotate all at the same time. But if that's kind of confusing, sometimes it's hard to grab the right one, I could say just scale. And now you'll see I only can scale either in Z, X, or in X and Z at the same time, which makes it a lot easier to make sure that you're grabbing the right geometry um, that you were looking for. So I'll just kind of make some quick, quick changes here. Again, we're going to start to describe um, the shape of this object. Grab my edge here, if I can grab it, which is not working. If you're not familiar, Left click and hold will bring a select other dialog box. So quick little side note, if you're ever struggling like me where Fusion's not grabbing maybe the right priority, it's not grabbing the hole that you were looking for behind, you can always left click and hold and 
grab that geometry. So now I'm just going to start grabbing these edges and, um, and move them around, right? I have a few different, um, I have five different edges. You'll see as I move the geometry around, the T-spline is updating. Now one thing um, that Jake did a really great job of describing in the previous se session was um, curvature continuity. So for instance, G0, G1, G2 um, continuity. Now, what you'll see in the T-spline environment is that all, um, all T-splines are always curvature continuous, or G2. So you'll notice as I'm kind of making these manipulations, uh, it's always maintaining you know, a, uh, a G2 curvature between those faces, right? Um, in the sculpt workspace, you can have G2, which would be continuous, kind of a seamless surface, or G0, which would be a creased edge, which I'll show you and we'll talk about a little later. All right, so in just a couple quick um, edits, I've started to capture kind of the outside of the shape, but we've only been working on one plane the entire time, right? So this will be a little bit, um, this will be a little bit continuous, but I'm gonna do the same thing, right? Now I might wanna grab these edges, edit form, and continue to manipulate these around my model, not scale, but move, and I can move them to continue uh, to make edits. Now another thing that you'll notice, with um, T-splines, best practice, start with the, few, the, the least amount of faces as you can, right? Because you'll get into uh, an instance, the closer the edges are together, the more it will impact the, the curvature. The other thing that's important to note is that T-splines, the fall off, meaning, uh, if we look at this from the side, when I pulled on this surface, it affected um, not just the, the first um, face, but the second face as well. So the fall off always happens in two faces or edges in either direction, right? So if I wanted to make that a more kind of pinched or localized change, I would subdivide this even further, right? So if I had a um, if I had another edge in here, just as a quick example, and I grabbed on that same edge, pulled it in another direction, um, you'll see that it ends by this face instead of all the way to the last face, right? Because I have more localized um, amount of faces in that area. All right. So um, another thing that I might want to do, so you'll notice, as I mentioned, I've got five faces, and as I pull on that face, it's you know, it's, it's not moving them all, right? And it's falling off across. But I can also use a tool in edit form called soft modification. And what soft modify allows you to do, you'll notice with it off, it's just moving that face that I've selected. And the fall off happens across two spans in any direction. Uh, but with soft modify on, now I can control the distance and the way that that fall off happens across multiple faces. Right, so you'll notice as I grab that now, it's actually, it has more influence over uh, the spans and the faces, and if I had more faces in either direction, it might continue to make edits to it in either direction. So this might be an easier way for me to, you know, kind of modify and, and make some changes to this. Um, maybe I'm going to, you know, rotate that, those faces. I'll say okay, and just the same, grab, edit form, and rotate the entire object, right? And I'm just gonna move this roughly into the right location and then we're gonna move on. Any questions so far? Yes? So would you just add additional, um, additional uh, mesh to be able to like, tweak the form as you need to hit the sensor to your style? It, yes, so, um, so the question is, would I just add more faces to kind of add, you know, change the curvature? Um, the answer is yes. Now, again, what I would suggest is you start off with the least amount of detail that you can, you capture kind of broad form, and then as you start to refine that is where you want to you know, subdivide further. If I started off with you know, 20 faces by 40 faces, the, it takes a lot more effort to make broad changes, right, to capture that curvature as opposed to doing it with two spans or three spans or something like that. But yeah, absolutely, so as I need more detail, I would start to subdivide further and, and make those changes. Yes, another question. I've had a number of major issues when I'm trying to convert something and to shell it out after it's completed, and I don't know until I hit that process. Is there a way to see is this something akin to the analysis function in modeling here to know if I'm going to have that problem before I get to it? 
There's not. So the question was, um, <clears throat> with sculpted bodies, you often bring it over to a solid, and then you want to shell it, and you might run into an instance where it can't shell a certain thickness or something like that. Um, the short answer is no. There's not a tool in here that will tell you. Um, but I would look for, um, you know, with shell, it might be, you know, thin intersections, right? It might be the way that the surface patches come together. Um, there's probably a few things we can chat offline about how you can do that. The short answer is, you know, at this point, at this point, I only have a single surface, right? So there's nothing that's going to tell me, you know, whether it'll shell yet. Um, but, you know, best practice, I mean, you can always, you know, I'll frequently make copies, right? Maybe return out if you have a, you know, uniform um, closed body, see if it'll shell, see if there's any areas, come back and make more edits. All right, so um, moving on. So I, I mentioned before, um, there's fundamentally, um, you know, a couple simple ways that you can create geometry. Sorry, I'm just gonna make sure I have my timer up so I know where we're at. Um, so types of geometry. Uh, I started working out before with a simple primitive. I used a face, right? So in the sculpt workspace, simplest way, you can start with primitives. Now, what I'll, I always say about primitives are primitives are made to be broken, right? Start off with a quad ball or start off with a, a box or you know a face. They're meant to be sliced and diced and bridged and subdivided, right? So, um, but they're very helpful, right? If you're describing something, um, you know that's and maybe it's a handle, right? You might want to start with a cylinder and then use the tools to subdivide and match from there. Um, but you're not limited to just primitives. You're not limited to just um, you know starting off with a shape and you know freely moving uh, the vertices around in X, Y, and Z. You can also start off a T-spline shape from sketch geometry, right? So in the um, Sketch workspace, create a sketch, define your curves, just like Jake showed us earlier. All the same best practices still apply. Um, but then from there, you can use that geometry to sweep, loft, extrude, or revolve with. And now you have a fully editable T-spline that you might continue to work with or crease or um, add more refinement to. So jumping back, and I'm going to jump um, I'm going to jump through a couple hoops here just to turn on um, some other geometry that's a little bit more ready. And we'll actually delete. Sorry. Uh, let's just delete these guys that I want to rebuild. So my apologies. That should have been ready for us. All right. So now um, in a side view, what I'm going to do is turn on my sketch. And as I mentioned before, I might, I might have a very specific profile that I want to start with or adhere to, right? I might have, you know, again, it might be easier for me to capture that shape by drawing a, a curve and then, um, and then going from there. So what I'm going to do is use um, this curve, and I'm going to sweep it along kind of the curve that represents, you know, the parting line or that feature line uh, on the center of the, the nunchuck. And what we're going to do is use sweep. So just like before, I'm going to grab this edge as my profile, and I will grab this as my path. And again, all the same things apply. I don't want to overbuild this, right? I don't want to start off with eight faces. You can see how tight um, that becomes. I'll start off maybe with one, right? Maybe with two, three, if it makes sense. I can always add more later. Um, so what I'm going to do in this instance is um, create that surface. And now I'm going to use a tool called Match. Um, and what Match allows you to do is grab the edge of a T-spline and match it to a curve, right? a curve that you defined in a sketch. Another quick side tip, hopefully you know this or you'll pick it up along the way. Um, I'm searching for commands. Keyboard shortcut is S, um, is S. So Type S on the keyboard, opens up this prompt. Workspace uh, specific, so you can do this in every workspace. If parallel is your favorite toolpath, type S, start typing parallel, and in the manufacturer workspace, it'll find it. So for me, I've always find, find myself, you know, I can shortcut things as many times as I want. I search for them all the time. Um, 
So anyway, we're going to use match. So I'm going to grab match, and I will match this edge to the edge of my, um, uh, of my sketch. And I have some choices here. I can control the spacing. Do I want uniform spacing of the subdivisions? Or do I want it to kind of pack the, uh, the edges closer where there's higher degrees of curvature? So both of those are available. And what I'll do is say OK. And now, again, what I've been doing all along is working flat. right? I'm on one plane. So I'm kind of creating this. Again, think the same techniques that Jake talked about earlier um, with surfaces and sketches. I'm starting flat. I'm starting off with, um, you know, with maybe a couple sketches that I want. And then from there, I'll use the same kind of simple techniques to start to define um, the rest of my geometry. So if I were to grab this, you know, I might know maybe there's a specific distance you know, that I'm aiming for. I can enter that in. The, the other important thing to note is that um, while you can enter in values directly, you can reference sketches, the T-spline workspace is a um, direct modeling environment. right? So what it is not today is parametric back to the sketch. right? So I'm using that sketch to kind of define my feature line. Perfect within, you know, again, the tolerance that I define. But what it's not going to do is update if I edit that sketch, right? That would be a parametric feature. You'd want to use um, the surface workspace, things that Jake might have talked about um, earlier today. All right, continuing on. So I'm just going to make some quick changes here. We're going to pull this out because there's kind of a, you know, there's a flat back where, you know, the finger and the trigger is um, on this side. And I'll say OK. And now what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to use some, um, some of my direct modeling techniques. You know, maybe move this edge in so that it's closer. And again, when I look at this from a side, even though I did not match it to that top curve, which I could, and I know in kind of practicing, practicing this earlier, um, I don't have enough uh, faces and edges for it to match both curvature at the same time, right? When you match one, it'll actually pull it off of the other, because I don't have enough math. I don't have enough edges for it to match both at the same time. So that's a good example where you might want to subdivide again and, and build that out. All right. So the next thing that I want to do, you'll see I have kind of my surface um, defined. I think I have more than one turned on here at the same time. So let's, uh, let's remove one of these guys. There we go. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I want to kind of patch these together. And again, there's a couple ways that I can do that. Um, but my, my best efforts here today are to try to show you as many different techniques as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, and, and this is, again, another technique that I like to use. Um, I'm going to start off and build another sweep. And I'm going to sweep this edge along this path, again, as light as I can. Right, start light. So we'll just say this is one span by three. I'm using three because everything else is three. Right? So again, another thing that you want to be cognizant of as you're working in this environment is what is your topology of the geometry that you're working on? What I mean by topology is you know, what is the breakup or the math of one surface versus another? Because what you'll run into, while we can make T intersections, and you will make T or star intersections, you only want them where you need them, right? It's a lot easier to uh, create and work with this geometry by, by maintaining um, similar spans in either direction. All right, so we're going to say OK to that. And I just basically built this as a dummy surface that I'm going to define between these two edges on either side. So what I'll do is come in here, and I'm going to use another tool. Again, these are all in the Modify menu. As I mentioned, I'm a typer. Um, weld vertices is the tool um, that I'm going to use here. And what I'm going to do is just weld together the vertices between these surfaces on either side, basically bridging and spanning that gap. So what I'll do is grab one vertice, snap it to the other. You'll see temporarily Fusion will turn those uh, T-splines into box mode, which they'll look very prismatic. Um, when you snap together one vertice, it basically can't compute what to do, what the smooth uh, representation is of the, the two points that you've snapped together. But as soon as you grab the next point, oops, the wrong point, 
uh, the next point and snap it together, it'll go back into smooth mode. So just window select, pull these guys together, and one more time, and I've made a mistake, but maybe this is a good teachable moment. Um, so, uh, so I went ahead and, and snapped them together. Now what I intended to do was snap my dummy surface to my existing surface. Weld vertices is um, contextual. So you'll notice the options you have when you use weld are you can, uh, you can weld vertex to vertex, which means first selection moves to second selection. Um, you can weld vertex to midpoint, which will kind of average them out and bring them together or you can weld them within a tolerance that you can specify. I selected them wrong because I window selected them and it made the, not the selection that I wanted. I very specifically want this point to move to that point and I'll just grab those again so that they match um, closer to what I was looking for. While I do that, any questions so far? I am here for you, so let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. All right, so I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll do it as quickly as I can. We're gonna weld point to point. And again, I'm just pulling these back together so that now I have a bridge transition between those two surfaces. Again, these surfaces are not yet complete, right? They're not really defined. Um, I would continue to refine these. I have some more work that I need to do on the top. Um, but for now, I've at least kind of bridged together and I have one continuous surface, yes. Welding and merging, good question. So um, welding is, is vertex, it's a vertex tool. So it's point to point with uh, vertex. Merging is for edges. So you grab an edge and an edge and you can merge the edges together. So one thing you'll notice um, in this example here is that, that half of the surface turned red. Um, and why is because it's telling me that that's not a part of the symmetry that I've already created. Um, so there's a couple things that I can do here. Um, what I'll do just in this example, I'm going to grab, um, actually before I do that, I'm going to first clear symmetry. So when you create symmetry, you might not want symmetry forever, right? Maybe this will be asymmetrical, but at some point, you know, I want to get as far down the road as I can, symmetrical, and then add um, or make it asymmetrical later. So what I'll do is just delete um, my T-spline on one side, and I'll grab this face on the other, and I'm just doing that because I'm going to use duplicate again. Let's turn off some, some of the noise here. Um, so I'm gonna grab duplicate again, uh, sorry, symmetry again, but this case, uh, this time I'll do uh, duplicate symmetry and I'm gonna mirror that about this plane and if I can either choose to weld it or not weld it, right, automatically within a tolerance and I'll say okay and now that will bring that surface kind of around. Now what you'll see is I have, you know, I have a, an edge that runs right along, um, sorry, right along the bottom of that fillet. Maybe, you know, I want to define the, the curvature, right? I want to define that surface, or um, I might leave those sharp or overbuild them and trim them back in the surface environment and put a fillet on it later, G2 fillet or a variable fillet if I wanted. So again, you don't necessarily have to do everything um, in the sculpt workspace, right? It's not, not meant to be a one, you know, a one tool that you have to do everything in. Use the tools, the best tool for the job, right? Um, in this case, you know, I might want to, in fact, when I jump out of this workspace, um, we'll talk about a couple other things, uh, but I might want to, you know, use, you know, here's two different examples. One is, um, this T-spline body where I've defined, you know, the curvature here for that, that kind of fillet or that blend. If I wanted that to be a tighter fillet or a tighter transition, because it's really not a fillet, um, I'd subdivide it further and make that tighter. Um, or what I could choose to do is, just like I've done over here, and I'll just grab this and uncrease it, right, so that we can talk about that, right? So if I wanted that to be a tight, um, or a G0 transition, I would grab the edge and right click and crease it. And you can crease, I should grab all of my edges here. Um, you can crease any edge to make it a G0 transition and then you know, bring this over. You know, maybe it should live that way or ultimately you would bring it out of the sculpt workspace and add you know, say a fillet 
to that edge later. Is there a question? Questions so far? Okay. So you see, I can, we'll add a fillet on that edge. Yes? Yeah, so it's a good question, and I'll answer it the, the best I can. So the first thing that I intended on talking about is um, what I've created so far and what you get when you leave that workspace. I'll just see one of the you know, unfinished examples from practicing. Um, is a surface body, right? So what you leave the T-spline environment with, this is a...